Welcome to week five. Everything, uh, everything going well? And so we will assume that you're going to say yes. We're going to continue our exploration of beams in Fletcher. And we learned the uh, last time we were together that we have an analysis method. Analysis method. And that method was very straightforward. The first is we collect our beam properties. What are those beam properties? We need the width, we need the depth, we need the cover, we need the uh, compressive strength of the concrete, we need the yield strength of the steel, we need the area of the steel. So we collect all of these properties of the beam from a drawing, right? Because we're only analyzing, we're analyzing someone else's beam. We know all of those things. And then we have a procedure that we follow to analyze the beam. Step one, we assume the steel yields. Right? As a result, the strain in the steel exceeds the yield strain, and therefore the stress in the steel is equal to the yield stress. Right? So far, so good. After that, it all falls apart. A is equal to ASFY over 0.85F prime CB. Our nominal moment capacity is equal to ASFY D minus A over 2. And then our third step is we check that assumption. Right, we say to ourselves, self, what is the actual strain in the steel? Which is equal to 0 0.003 multiplied by D minus C over C, where C is equal to A divided by beta 1, and beta 1 is equal to 0 0.85 when F prime C is equal to 4,000 PSI. Right? That's our analysis method. If the strain in the steel is less than the yield strain, then the assumption is not true. is inadequate. And if the strain in the steel is greater than 0 0.005, then we are in the tension control. Beam is good. Phi is equal to 0 0.9 and our design moment is phi m sub n. Pretty easy, right? And if it's in between, if it's not below the yield strength at 0 0.002, but it's still below 0 0.005, we say it's in transition. Right? So if there's a, if 0 0.002, which is the yield strain, the steel, it's in transition. And if it's in transition, then our phi has a different value. Right? Then our phi is equal to 0 0.65 plus 0 0.25 multiplied by 0 0.005. 0 
3 plus f sub y over sub s all divided by 0 0.008, I think. I think that's the right answer. Okay, so there's our, uh, there's our um, analysis method. And I'm sorry, that is not the correct, uh, it's equal to, uh, equal to this. F prime y over e sub s divided by 0 0.005. And that gets us somewhere in between. Now, if we're doing design work, we're not allowed to be in transition zone. We say the beam is inadequate. Okay, under the under the 2019 code, but we can still calculate the capacity because sometimes we're looking at an older building, and the older building was probably designed under the code of the time, which was what we call a working stress code, and not an LRFD code, and so we get a different result. So that's, our, that's where we've gotten to, right? It's taken us a few weeks to get here, but this is where we are. So we've got this down, but it is kind of cumbersome. Right? Not the, uh, not the uh, neatest piece of work so far. So it's cumbersome because we have to make that assumption do the analysis and then come back. So often you do the assumption, the analysis work only to find out that no, you're full of shit, it didn't yield, and so that's all wrong. So we're gonna talk about some concepts, a very powerful concept called the reinforcement ratio. And so that's where we're going to, uh, going to go. We're gonna define a reinforcement ratio is equal to AS divided by BD. Now, what is this symbol? Don't call it little p. This is the Greek letter rho. Reinforcement ratio rho equals AS over BD. Why would I say don't call it little p? Right, p has a straight up and down stick. Like this, this is P, and this is rho. Now, normally I don't yell at you, but what happens is you guys start to call it little p, and I'm still calling it rho, and you call it little p, and then sometime about week 10, I say little p when I mean rho then it's not a good day. So do not fall into the habit of saying little p because if you talk to somebody 200 miles from here and say rho, 2,000 miles from here and say rho, they know you mean the reinforcement ratio. Little p doesn't, is not defined. It's my bad attempt at humor this morning. Okay, don't call it little p. So rho is going to be simple. It's the area of the steel divided by B, the width of the beam, D, the depth of the beam, and this is dimensionless. So that's cool, because if we measure the area of the steel in uh, square miles, and we measure B and D, both of them in miles, it doesn't matter, you get the same ratio as if you used inches, or feet, or furlongs, or smoots, or whatever type of measurement you want to use. Make sense? So it's pretty interesting, right? This is a very powerful analysis tool, and we're going to derive a couple of expressions today that will help us in, help us in analysis, but is really helpful in design. So let's take a look at that. We're going to, as we so often do in engineering, look at an only interesting to engineer's condition. The balanced section. 
The balance section occurs when the concrete crushes strain at 0 0.003 just as the steel yields. Just as the steel yields, the concrete crushes. In other words, it's neither tension nor compression control. It's both and neither. It's dead center, right? Only interesting as a theoretical concept, very difficult to, to be able to achieve it in reality, but we can imagine such a condition, right? So just at the moment that the steel starts to permanently yield, permanently strain, the concrete crushes. And we're going to have certain conditions where that occurs. For example, the area of steel for a given beam where this occurs is going to be called the balanced area. Row balanced is going to be AS balanced over BB, right? A balanced reinforcement ratio, which is right at the edge of tension and compression control. So what's our favorite shape? What's our favorite shape to draw? If we look at our strain distribution, we have a very interesting condition. In the balanced condition, the strain distribution at balance, where the depth to the neutral axis is the balanced depth to the neutral axis, we know two things. We know both the strain in the steel and the strain in the concrete because they're both yielding in the case of steel and failing at the case of concrete simultaneously. So this is what we refer to as our balanced neutral axis. So far so good, right? So I wanted to make sure I did, it was just a plastic thing. I, and it's just fine. I just wanted to make sure I hadn't kicked something of yours down the aisle. OK. Those of you who are watching this online have no idea what just happened. But uh, it was really, really funny. And you missed it by not being here. All right. This occurs in our beam. When we have our area of steel is equal to the balanced area of steel, B, D, right? And from there, we can do what we usually do. C sub B divided by D minus C sub B is equal to 0 0.003 divided by F sub Y over the modulus of elasticity. Now, this is the value for 60 KSI steel. It could be a different value if we had different strength of steel. So we need to be aware that that's the case. So that's why we're going to write it that way, which means if I do a little bit of additional out, does anyone need that back, by the way? Not hearing screams of pain, I assume that you did not. Not um, assuming that all of these things are true. I'm doing a little bit of algebra. We get an expression that C sub B is equal to eighty-seven divided by 87 plus F sub Y over uh, 1, all multiplied by D. Remember, 0 0.003 multiplied by 29,000 
is equal to 87. And this is, happens to be the modulus of elasticity of the steel in kips per square inch. Okay? So that's all we did. I can uh, show you how to get there if you want. Anybody want to see the derivation? You do? <laughs> you sure? Just algebra. Take my word for it, right? What you do is you expand that equation, then you collect all the C terms on one side, and then you then pull C out and divide the other two. Maybe I'll make it part of an assignment. Thanks for volunteering that. No problem. Yeah, make sure everybody, no, I, I won't put that in a second. Okay, so we have, uh, we have this expression. So that's pretty cool. It still hasn't gotten us anywhere, but now we know exactly where the depth of our balanced reinforcement ratio is. Now, we know at the balance section what happens. We know that the steel strain is equal to the yield strain. And the reason we know that is because that's how we defined it. It cannot be otherwise. So that means that A, sorry, that the, the compressive force that's balanced is equal to the tension force that's balanced. And from there, we get AB 0.85 F prime C is equal to, and this is A balanced, of course, is equal to AS balanced F sub Y. Right. And from there, we can define our definition that uh, A is equal to AS, F sub Y, this is balanced, divided by 0 0.85 F prime C B. Should look, uh, should look familiar, right? Well, it's, uh, it's quite interesting that if we take this equation here, we can have a new definition, A sub S balanced is equal to rho balanced BD, right? That's just a little bit of rearrangement from where we were before. And if I substitute that in, recognize that A sub balanced is equal to beta 1 times C balanced. I can say up here that I have AS balanced F sub Y is equal to 0 0.85 F prime C beta 1 C balanced B. So all I did was I substitute this in up there for A sub balanced is beta 1 C sub balanced. And then if I tell you that A, S, A, the balanced area steel is rho BD, then I get rho BD, rho balanced, FY is equal to 0 0.85 F prime C beta 1 C sub B B and look what happens. I've got B on both sides. So I can cancel B out, right? And then I just derived that expression that, this, that C sub B is equal to zero, sorry, is equal to uh, 87 divided by 87 plus F sub Y multiplied by D. And if I plug that in, yep. if I now take this definition and I substitute it in here for C sub B, I keep forgetting that the people on the screen, on, uh, people out there in TV land can't uh, necessarily see me do that. If I take this expression and I put it into here, then I get an expression
that rho sub balanced is equal to 0 0.85 F prime C over Fy all multiplied by 87 divided by 87 plus F sub Y theta 1. So my rho sub balanced is independent of the dimensions of the beam. Neither B nor D show up anymore. Holy crap! That means for any beam that has that reinforcement ratio, it's in balance. If it's 10 miles by 40 miles, as long as A sub S over BD is equal to rho sub balanced, it's in balance. And it doesn't matter. It's independent of the beam. It's only dependent on the stuff the beam is made from. Pretty good, right? Not necessarily useful, but pretty good. So can we now take this expression and make it more useful? Well, it has a use right now. If my reinforcement ratio is larger than rho sub e, what does that mean? If rho is larger than rho sub b, then the strain in the steel is smaller than the yield strain. Holy cow. That's useful. If rho is larger than rho sub b, then the strain in the steel is smaller than the yield strain. That means that the steel isn't yielding. So I no longer have to go through and calculate what a is, and then c is a over beta 1 and then find out what the strain in the steel is. I can tell you by looking at the reinforcement ratio, which is a function only of what I made the beam out of, F prime C and F sub Y, and tell you whether or not you meet the requirements, whether or not it's safe to assume it's, it's strained past the yield point. Well, that's useful because now I no longer have to do that I no longer have to solve the problem with that assumption to find out that the assumption is wrong. I can check my assumption using this reinforcement ratio without any effort. Right? It's the area of the steel divided by BD. What do you think? Makes our analysis simpler, right? But analysis is only half the, uh, half the battle because it tells us if rho is greater than rho sub balanced, then we're in compression control. And that the strain in the steel is less than the yield strain. It doesn't tell us anything at all about whether or not whether or not we are in transition or tension. But it does tell us if rho is less than rho sub balanced, then the stress in the steel is equal to the yield stress. So let's do an example. So this is our, we can use this method of analysis which is to say, let's say we have a beam, oh, I don't know, it's six inches wide. It's 18 inches deep. It's got uh, two number fives down here. And the clear cover 
is two inches. And all of that I can get off the set of plans. So I want to check what's the nominal capacity of this beam. So first step is still the same. I collect my terms, collect properties. Okay, F prime C is four kips per square inch. F sub Y is 60 kips per square inch. B is equal to six inches. D is equal to H minus C, which, uh, which is the cover, which is 16 inches. Area of steel is, uh, it's actually N sub B minus times the A, the number of bars multiplied by the area of steel. Number five is 0 0.31. So this is two bars at 0 0.31 inches squared per bar, 0 0.62 inches squared, right? So we've got that. Now we change slightly. Copy, compute rho. Rho is equal to 0 0.62 divided by 6 times 16, right? It's AS over BD. And that comes out to be what? is equal to 0 0.0064. Anybody get a different answer? Okay. Well, that's good. If I go to a table of values, I can look it up. Rows of balanced for F prime C is equal to 4 kips per square inch and F sub Y is equal to 60 kips per square inch. My balanced reinforcement ratio is 0 0.0265. Remember, it's dependent only on, sorry, 285. It's dependent only on these two values. So it's true no matter what the beam is. Rho is less than rho balanced. It means the steel's going to yield. We don't, we no longer have to make that assumption and then check if it's valid. We can check if it's valid first, which is pretty, pretty useful. It saves computation. Not so big of a deal now when everything would be done by computers, but at one time it was. So um, we can go, then go on from, uh, from this point of view and we can say, well, A is equal to ASFY over 0 0.85 F prime CB, which is 0 0.62 multiplied by 60 kips per square inch, divided by 0 0.85 divided by 4 kips per square inch, and divided by uh, 6 inches. And that gives me a result of 1.82 inches. My nominal moment capacity, M sub N, is ASFY, D minus A over 2, which is equal to 0 0.62 multiplied by 60, multiplied by 16 minus 1.82 over 2, and that comes out to be 561.4 kip inches. Still need to do this though. C is equal to A over beta 1, which is 1.82 divided by 0 0.85, and that comes out to be 2.14 inches, and the strain in the steel is 0 0.003 
multiply by d minus c over c, and that is equal to zero point zero two four seven. The strain in the steel is greater than the yield strain, which is good because that's what the row told us. But the strain in the steel is less than 0 0.005. We're in transition. So we still need to calculate our fee factor is 0 0.65 plus 0 0.25 multiplied by the strain in the steel divided by 0 0.005 which is equal to 0 0.65 plus 0 0.25 multiplied by 0 0.02. Oh, I'm sorry, what am I doing? Point zero two four seven is much greater than 0 0.005. You guys got to catch me. I told, remember I told you I would make mistakes at the board? Right, point zero 0.02 is much bigger than point zero zero 0.005. In fact, it's uh, some uh, 40, four times bigger, four times bigger. So, V is equal to point 0.9, multiply out. But you know, what if it was in transition? We still have to do this, and this is a, it's a pain, right? I, I, I solved part of my problem, and then I can validate my assumption without checking. But I still have a problem when I'm in transition. So I'm going to go to my next step. I'm going to find out what is my reinforcement ratio when my strain goes into tension control. So for in tension control, by definition, the strain in the steel is greater than or equal to 0 0.005. And so, if the reinforcement ratio goes down as the strain in the steel goes up, or vice versa, they're tied together. We're going to be able to define another point. And that point is rho max, the maximum allowable reinforcement ratio. Rho max. the reinforcement ratio where the strain in the steel is equal to 0 0.005, which is the boundary of tension control under the code where phi is equal to 0 0.9. And this is pretty cool because it tells us if rho is greater than rho balanced, we're in compression control. And if rho is less than rho max, phi is equal to 0 0.9 and we're in tension control. And if rho is smaller than rho balanced, but it's greater than rho max, we're in transition. And since we don't like transition, if we could derive an expression for rho max, we'd be in great shape. Because that would allow us to look at the beam, and if we can do the same trick we did with rho balanced, look at the beam and right away say, oh, it's in tension control, phi is equal to 0.9, I don't need to check. That's pretty cool. 
because it means I no longer have to go in and look at it. I can just look at the beam, calculate the area of the steel, calc look, at, look up B and D, or find out what B and D are, do my calculations and say, oh, it's either in tension, transition, or compression control, right? So we need to develop an expression for rho max. Now, you guys have been pretty patient with uh, derivations and things. This one is really easy. Rho max is equal to 0 0.003 plus F sub Y over the modulus divided by 0 0.008 multiplied by rho balanced. And all I'm doing is forcing my change from F sub Y, the yield stress or yield strain, to be, if this is 0 0.005, this is the concrete strain over 0 0.008, it's going to give me my maximum reinforcement ratio. And you'll notice again, is B up there? Is D up there? No. This is completely independent of anything other than what you've made the beam from. So we can go and check rho max, and if we're below rho max, not only do we say the steel yields, we also know that it's going to yield more than 0 0.005 and phi is going to be 0.9. Now that's useful. So we're going to use this in analysis, but where is it really going to come and, and pay off is in design. Because if I'm going to say I have a beam that's going to have this dimension and that dimension, then I can say, no, I'm going to start with a guess and my reinforcement ratio is rho max over 2. That'll work. So it's going to be very useful to have this expression. We know if our maximum reinforcement ratio is larger than our actual, if the reinforcement ratio of your beam is below rho max, you're in tension control and phi is 0.9. So all we cut the calculation effort of designing that beam in half, which doesn't sound like a big deal because you have a computer do it until the computer has to do a million calculations then it does make a difference. OK? That's pretty cool. Well, we've got rho balanced and we have rho max. And both of those we've been able to derive from first principles. Right? We have one other reinforcement ratio that we pay a lot of attention to. To understand it, you require no algebra. To understand the other limitation, you have to understand the purpose of the building code. What's the purpose of the building code? Why do we have it? Why do we just let people build whatever they want? That's correct. The building code sets the minimum life safety standard. So we have, that's the, uh, that's the answer you give your uh, mom. In the world that, we're, that you're about to enter, some of you, have, you've all had internships probably, you've seen it. We're in a, we, we talk about the purpose of the building code is to protect the public from fools and charlatans. Fools who don't know what they're doing, and charlatans who are trying to make a quick buck. Okay? We've talked about it before, only because it's still going on. Those guys are still lying dead in that structure in New Orleans. It's been a year. Because nobody knows why. Either they didn't build it to the drawings, or the drawings are messed up. There's all kinds of problems. They don't know why the structure hasn't fallen down. It's the official analysis. There's a, a very interesting uh, um, ethics course coming up that I'm going to try to see if I can
can uh, get a recording for and broadcast about this very issue in New Orleans. So what do we, how do we protect the public? We say we're going to have a roll min. And roll min is the minimum reinforcement. And it has no derivation. The minimum reinforcement ratio is selected by the people who write the building code to, pro to provide a minimum amount of reinforcement. Even if your analysis says you don't need that much, that's what you have to use. And remember that you never know who those people are that write the building code. I think I may have told you, I, this uh, past uh, fall, I was appointed to subcommittee A of ACI 318, which writes the building code. And so the material sections of the building code are being written by, among other people, me. And then a consensus agreement, everybody votes on it and says it's okay. And so I'm not talking to you about some magical, mystical bunch of geniuses that are somewhere out there writing the building code. It's practicing engineers and academics, and then the weirdos like me or both, okay? So this is what we say, and there's nothing to derive, you can't understand it, it's defined, and it is equal to the smaller of 200 divided by F, y, F, uh, F sub y, or three times the square root of f prime c over f sub y. That's our definition. There is nothing to understand. You have to accept it. So let's check it out. For 4,000 PSI concrete, 60 KSI steel, Roman is equal to the smaller of 200 over 60,000 or 3 times the square root of 4,000 over 60,000. What do those come out to be? This one is easy, 0 0.0033. And the other one zero point zero three one six. Or you take the, uh, take the, it's not the smaller. It's the larger. God damn it, Kevin. So erase all that stuff you heard. It's the larger. And so we would use 0 0.0033. And you might wonder why, with all of the materials available in the world, we're only using 4,000 PSI concrete and 60 KSI steel all of the time. The reason being, is that the value of beta 1 changes as the compressive strength of concrete changes. And I have found in teaching this course, I used to teach people that, and then they would get all confused because it's unfortunately also 0 0.85. And so I would have 0.85 times 0.85 and people would get lost and everything else. So when we, when we go to computer analysis right after the exam, then uh, you will not have to uh, do these 
um, uh, this way anymore. The computer will look up beta 1 for you, and therefore you don't need to remember what it is. But that's why we're always using this value. Let's do uh, for uh, for my entertainment. Let's do let's do uh, Roman <sighs> Roman for f prime c is equal to six thousand psi, and f sub y is still sixty thousand psi. So it's either equal to two hundred over f sub y or 3 times the square root of f prime c over f sub y. So this is still 0 0.0033. And here it's 0 0.0087. So that's the larger value. But obviously, it's both readily calculated and something that we as human beings define. The purpose is so that we don't accidentally kill somebody when we're being dumb. Because the machine, and very much these days, this type of analysis is done by computers. The computers will give you zero steel because they don't have brains. They're just really fast calculating machines. If you feed them stupid, result, stupid numbers, they give you really good looking wrong results. So we need to be able to do that by hand. And that, uh, that covers for, uh, for our purposes our definitions of reinforcement ratio. So a reinforcing ratio, we have rho balanced, rho max, rho min, and we use them all for, um, for different purposes. Anybody have any questions? Seems pretty straightforward, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a, uh, a break for a moment or two, and then we're going to uh, use our new analysis tool to uh, show you uh, that there is a, uh, a problem in the world if we, uh, if we continue on this way.